Good morning, pretty girl. It's Friday. It is Friday. I feel so tired. Oh, I'm I just know. like past exhausted right now. Uh-huh. I understand. Don's doing what he always does. He's helping me get out the door, making Johnny's lunch. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, sweetheart. You ready for me, Gray? There you are, sweet thing. Hi. How's the little princess this morning? Yeah, that's midnight in the hallway there. He going to see Johnny, help wake Johnny up. Hi, here you go. Oh. There comes my Ruby. Stripes at my feet. He was in the house already and there's Marty, but Morris is late for breakfast again. Yesterday when I hollered, he came from over here and the last two nights he's not been in on his heating pad. Doesn't mean anything's wrong. They move up their spots during the year like to throw mom off, I guess. And here's the star of our show, although he's not very cuddly when he's eating his chicken. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh, you got chicken on your nose, silly boy. You enjoy it. Panther, honey, good morning. Here's my buddy. Hi! I'm guessing chicken's sounding mighty good to you this morning, huh? It's a good boy. Here you go. All right off the bat this morning, the guy in the pickup truck up there in front of me, speeding off into the sunrise, I had to pull over and let him go by. I just couldn't deal with him. I don't know why he would want to, um, pay so little attention and threaten the back of Ruby. I want to be, you know, just to let him know that being in an accident will slow him down a lot on the way to work in the morning. But anyway, I pulled over and let him go because he was being an extreme, extremely unsafe and making me feel very uncomfortable and I, I'm not even two miles from the house yet. <laughs> oh joy. But it is Friday. I love it when it looks that beautiful in the morning. Well, that Model X is nice and shiny like Ruby, but it's not brand new. They either low miles or excellent care like Dawn does for Ruby. It's very shiny, pretty cleaned up. There's a three over on the right. Things have been more smooth since that original encounter this morning. Wow, at 7.22 a.m. Some mornings things just go smoother than others or faster than others. I don't know. I didn't go any faster. Certainly weren't any major traffic issues. I do think I may have you know, one of those mornings where the traffic light gods all got together and talked and let me pass through town uh, without having to stop. Maybe that was it. Well, that explains it. So the Toyota truck is next to the house with the Rivian truck. So Marianne, in your head, Rivian truck, pretty green house. So it's back this morning. Well, I can see why I was confused with the driveways being side by side, but... So maybe the Rivian truck is not gone. It's really at that house. It's just my timing and the driver's timing is such that it's not always in the driveway when I come by in the morning. Glad to see it today. I need to stop at Harris Teeter today. What's the bet that I won't just blow past there because I'm lulled into peaceful serenity driving my car? Hopefully I can remember. I think I can remember. I did not get last night's video done. At 3 a.m. I gave up and went to bed. <laughs> I didn't have it even started. I imported the files to work on them and woke up a couple times and thought, oh, I should really get back to it. And it just never happened last night. So either before or after our walk, I need to uh, work on that. So I'll be a little behind today. That's all right. <laughs> 
I'm just really feeling this Friday thing. So I'm reading a post on the Facebook Tesla Divas page and it started with this person saying, I want to love my Model Y, but I can't get in and into the car, um, my phone to open it up properly on any kind of regular basis and I'm so frustrated. And unfortunately there are a slew of other people <laughs> that are just as dissatisfied with their ability to get into their Y or 3. Um, S and X drivers with the FOB, new or old, they don't seem to be complaining so much. Um, yeah, I feel them. I do. Um, what do I want to say about that? Well, first off, Ruby's FOB, the old school, the cars with no key card, no phone access um, automatically, no Bluetooth when they walk up. They work great. My key fob basically never fails to open the car door. And then I have self-presenting, so what's not to like? I think the solution for all of these divas is they need to drive at X and the door needs to open for them. Because they're all like, it's down in my purse and I've got my coffee and I, you know, I'm fumbling for things trying to get in my car. The X just opens the door for you and it's all good. <laughs> um... And then uh, several people in there said, you know, I have an Android phone. And I don't hate Android, so don't no hate back at me. I am an Apple girl. I don't hate Android, though. I've used, I had an Android phone before I had an Apple phone. I've, you know, I've used Android plenty over the years. And sometimes, it, you know, there's lots of things to like about it. I don't prefer it, though, which is why I don't have one. And after this experience Don's had with the base, with the Google Pixel 6 he has now and basically the 3C that he had before, no. Just say, just no. <laughs> um, I guess you won't know until if you're an Android user until you actually try an iPhone, the eye-opening experience and change that it could be for you from certain things happening. But anyway, um, you know, Don has trouble all the time getting into the Y, so he could be, you know, commiserating with these divas about his experience trying to get in. And his phone has a known Bluetooth problem, and it just, it just doesn't work on a consistent basis. So, um, yeah, it sounds like this person did all the right things, except for when she approaches the car, she'd really prefer her phone to still be in her purse, and... You know, the girls talked about having to turn their pocket or turn their butt or turn their purse around or whatever. But I would say it's really sad that they, you know, that some cars in the fleet are so inconsistently reasonable to get into. Um, and especially, you know, the newer cars, they have phone access, they have key card access and they could have fob access so a lot of people told her just give in and buy a fob and because women have the option of just leaving the fob in their purse and if you put it in that like little zippered pocket on the side and you sling it over your shoulder in a consistent way every time I'm sure the fob is going to be able to get to the car and talk to it so I agree don't be hassled anymore just go just go get a fob but um a lot of people unhappy with getting in and out. Are you one of those people that's uh, that's having trouble or are you perfectly happy? I mean, if I go up to Jules with my phone or Ruby with my fob, I never have an issue getting into either car. Now, Jules doesn't fold out the headlights and beep the lights and let me know that she's ready for me. I have to hit, you know, open the handle. But when I open the handle, the, the, the um, side mirrors open. Um, so, uh, they fold, they fold out for me. And I think that was a cons conservation thing because in the garage for people walking by, they were opening and closing all the time and stuff. Um, I would prefer though on the first lock of the day or when I walk up to the car and she unlocks, I would personally prefer if Jules's, um, side mirrors went out because I'm getting in the car to go somewhere and they're going to open anyway. Or they open as soon as I touch the handle. That would be, I like my car to wake up when I approach it. And Ruby certainly, you know, looks all cheery and happy to see me. And Jules just kind of sits there sort of dark and quiet until I press the, press the handle. So, I don't know. Tesla do better about getting people in their car. The, you know, we got three methods to get in. And one of them, dang well, needs to work super consistent for people. And preferably the phone one. And, um... 
you know, for these newer people that are used to that, that don't want to go through the expense of ordering the fob or figuring it out or whatever. Just make it work for them. But I don't trust anything. I mean, my, my experience with Bluetooth is not good and it's not good across the, a multiple range of products and companies that has nothing to do with Tesla. Um, you know, my EB3 robot and the newer rob of robot from Lego is another example of where I've had Bluetooth issues. It has nothing to do with Tesla and it, you know, so anyway, happy morning and hopefully you got into your car just fine today. And just to say, I realize if you're one of those people not having a problem saying, well, I always get into my car just fine is not helpful to the poor people that are having trouble, you know, four or three times out of five getting into their car and are super frustrated. So, so Google, Niantic, the Pokemon Go company, they have really, God, there's no other good way to say this. They have really pissed off players with an announcement that came out yesterday. Um, they are raising the price of the remote raid passes for the second time. And it's a significant increase. And they are going to limit remote raid passes to five per day. Now, I don't use that many. So for me, this is probably not... Um, a super big problem the only day where I have ever used more than five raid passes is like when there's a Pokemon Go fest going on somewhere and um, I'm particip have participated in that or um, friends are at it participating and sending me invites to things I couldn't otherwise get or something like that so, so, but um, basically they said they never intended for remote raid passes these are my words now, although they did say never intended, to make people only want to raid remotely and not be willing to get out in the environment and raid in person with other trainers. Um, now back in the day before remote raid passes and when the kids were playing, because I started playing because the kids started, asked me to. <laughs> they asked me to play with them and then later on of course they wanted nothing to do with playing with me in the game but that's a whole nother story kids grow up interests change you know it's fine um so you know i would we would i would rush over to south park in the car and follow people around town from raid location to raid location and it was like a swarm of cars uh, sometimes in a rush and i would go so far as to say not always being as careful as they needed to be and we would raid together as a group and I, you know, I still know some of these people which is why us coordinating on the uh, Facebook Messenger chat that we do. Some some towns use Discord. Our local group kind of refuses to use Discord. We're an outlaw. We like Messenger chat better. Um, you know, we I know some of these people so when I'm raiding with them in Messenger, I, you know, I have a face to the name and, and that kind of thing or I've met up with them. But, um... Anyway, Niantic is trying to force us back to meeting in person and circling town together to complete raids. And then the other thing is, is that, um, you know, for some of these legendary harder to catch, harder to battle Pokemon, you need five to, I don't know, seven, eight players sometimes. And it can be hard to get that many players in person, which is one of the reasons why I have as many accounts as I do. Typically, I only have access to two of them at one time. But I know people that, you know, between them and their husband, they have uh, five accounts. So when they show up someplace to raid, they've got all these phone devices. And they just, they were trying to avoid <laughs> having to coordinate getting together with people. So they just basically built their own little Pokemon Go family and, um, you know, can raid on their own. But anyway, there would be worries for me about finding enough people to raid to catch the new latest Pokemon and so when we start doing remote raid passes like yeah I'll join in the chat and I get the invite and I raid and I catch the brand new Pokemon and I'm all happy and there's no stress well it could be a lot of stress to try to meet in person so and I would go so far as to say too with Don and Johnny you know it's a lot better for them if I 
on raid hour, which is at dinner time when I need to be doing adulting things. If while I'm cooking in the kitchen, I can participate in a raid or two from the comfort of my house with a remote raid pass, my family is happier. So yeah, they want me out in the community meeting people, but from a family perspective, doing a couple of remote, remote raids on the couch works better for me and my family. It's, it, it doesn't disturb important family time with other family members that aren't playing the game. So anyway, there's a bunch of people that are going to um, refuse to buy, refuse to remote raid, refuse to buy any passes, basically stop participating in the game for n number of days to try to hurt Niantic's pocketbook. So they'll reverse some of these decisions. Um, yeah, they did add a way to earn the remote raid passes just in-game play, but that's going to be few and far between, so I don't really know how wonderful that's going to be. But I may participate in the boycott. Uh, we'll see. I have participated in a couple other boycotts, and they did, Niantic did go back and make the... Um, radius around the, the spin pokestops and gyms larger again so you don't have to basically be standing or driving or parked right underneath it um the players were super upset they expanded it during covid and basically i would say once they did that, that there was just no going back there's a maki one car back behind me a model three just turned into the <clears throat> gas station to my left i guess they need morning coffee and um to the city of raleigh either increase the speed limit on that little stretch of road back up to 35 miles an hour from 25 where it used to be or put some police officers out there for a week to write tickets non-stop to people coming through that little stretch to slow it down because i'm tired of trying to do 25 because they got orange flags up and everything uh doing 30 doing even 35 and having people fly past me over there because i'm trying to do what you asked me to do and it's not really safe to do it and i don't want to be the unlucky one the morning you decide to enforce it so um 25 ain't working for people there but it, it you know it's because it's a main drag out of town but there are homes right up at the street. So I get, and buses that stop there for children sometimes in the morning. So I get the slowdown. I do, but, you know, there's no enforcement. It's just a royal pain. I didn't forget about Harris Teeter grocery store. Yay! I think I said this before, but this is our version of Fred Meyer. They just don't call it Fred Meyer here. I got uh, two big chickens, two porterhouse steaks, and a, a bunch of fresh spring, very thin asparagus. That's how I like mine. I grew up with asparagus in the backyard in New Jersey. Dad had planted it and was there long enough to actually cut it and eat it, and I loved it from the get-go. Of course, I got to have butter and salt on it, but... I really actually genuinely enjoy eating it so um, me and the butcher in there we're just not ever gonna be buds it's just not possible he's the one that told me I was ruining the extra sale price prime rib I bought at Christmas by planning to put it in the freezer and actually I mean I would use I would say my interpretation of my interaction with him that day was that I he scolded me if he wanted to say, I'm not sure you'll be happy with the quality of the meat after you freeze it, um, you know, maybe that would have been okay. But, you know, the customer's always right. And I just want to tell you that as long as you let it defrost in the refrigerator for like four days before you're ready to cook it and sit out on the counter for three or four hours to come up to room temperature before you do the closed oven method, there was no loss in um, quality by freezing it that Don and I could notice. No perceptible loss. I'm going to agree with the butcher and say that fresh is going to be better than frozen. But, uh, you know, at uh, 6 or $8 a pound sale, I think I'd be willing to deal with any little amount of less quality by freezing. So, there's that. And uh, today they had marked down, and I think it was him because I didn't see any other meat people in there yet. 
they had marked down some of the already sell price porterhouse steaks because they hadn't sold which i thought was probably a rarity um but the marked down price was more than the sale price so when he walked by even though i'm sort of scared of him and he never smiles and i think he hates me <laughs> i said sir um, did you intend to mark these down to a price that was more than the current sale price? And he didn't say anything to me. He just basically took them from my hands and walked off. So I thought, okay, either that was probably unintentional, and, but he doesn't like it that he made a mistake. Or it was intentional and he's not happy that I'm calling him out on it. And in either case, I expected him to fix the price and come back with the meat to give me a chance to buy it. So I hemmed and hauled and looked and studied and waited and then I grabbed my two chickens and he still wasn't back out. So I walked over there and I said to myself, well, I wanted to, you know, buy a couple of those. I was probably going to buy all four, but I wanted to buy at least a couple of those. And, um... He came from the other direction, so he had walked around, and I said, Sir, if you are going to lower the price on those, I'd like to purchase them. And uh, he said something to me I couldn't hear because of the fan. Um, and then he went over there and he started to read, How many of them do you want? And I said, Two, because there were four. And he just repriced them and came over and handed them to me. And I said, thank you. And, and he actually said, I think you're welcome at that point or something. So that was the, that was the most nice thing he's ever said to me. <laughs> I don't know. I swear I, 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 I didn't think I had a face that people like just immediately hate. I don't know. And there was one other bad interaction with him, too. I went home and told Don about, you know, how this guy makes me feel. And he offered one time to go up there and talk to him man to man to make sure he treated his wife right. But I said, no, I'll deal with him. I mean, he already hates me, so I might as well say whatever I want to him or, you know, ask whatever question I need. I'm not, I'm 55 years old in May. I'm not going to back down and walk away just because some guy gives me a look. You know, it's almost at this point in my life, like if you want stubborn Jersey girl to come out, you should, do, you know, when I was 25, I would have been intimidated and walked away and without my meat, but not, not now at this point in my life. Anyway, y'all didn't really need to hear all of that. I'm sure you have trials and tribulations with clerks at various stores from, 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 uh, you know, time and time and, and again, but every once in a while is what I meant to say but anyway I got my meat I have a steak for dinner tonight you know the guys are leaving I'm sure they'll be on the road by 5 they could be on the road as early as 4 4 30 it just depends on how long it takes them to finish packing once I get Johnny home from school Johnny has to go to gym today has to so he's not going to be available for pickup until 2 15 so We'll get home uh, by 3.15 and then the guys will pack up and, and head to Johnson City, Tennessee for the robotics event this weekend. I think it's called Delta 9 is what the event is called. Um, it has a couple of interesting sponsors which you may see in tomorrow's video clips. But And if you didn't hear me say before, you know, we went back and forth on me driving or Don driving. Um, probably not a thing worth asking Michelle to come watch kitties for and decided on Don because number one at that time of the day he'll be able to make the four hour drive four and a half hour drive better than me I'd be falling asleep behind the wheel I'm good in the morning bright sunlight three three and a half hours but that's like four four and a half hours and I'm um, going to be, you know, approaching dark. That's not a good time of day for me. And I'm already exhausted. And then the other reason is, you know, they're taking the soldering kit with them and some, a couple of other things. And Don's, you know, been guiding Johnny along on this. And um, if Johnny needs something soldered, Don would be there to help. And I think Don will really enjoy the robotics event. Um, so, um anyway that's why Don's he can just be Johnny support here better uh, than I could be and I'm I'm totally good with that so anyway my plans are steak grass cats and Legos <laughs> 
and uh, they'll be back home before I know it. They're planning on coming back Saturday, tomorrow, after the event. Don will try to take a nap, so he's up to driving home whatever time. They probably would not leave Johnson City before 5 or 6 o'clock. Um, it just depends on how that event is, you know, going, how many people, if Johnny still has battles, fights. Um, so I don't expect them to be back until after 10 p.m. tomorrow, maybe 11. Hopefully not later than midnight. That would just be a super long day for both of them. But... They are looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to seeing video and hearing about it. I did call the Garden Hut yesterday, and they do have um, Gibraltar deciduous woodsy azaleas. Probably not quite as big as this one that's fixing to open, but similar to that. Um, and uh, so they have the orange pretty azalea I saw at WRL. They do not have vanadu. They do not have the pink or any pink. They have like a yellow one also. So um, Don did give me permission. I assume that means he's willing to dig the hole without too much fuss <laughs> to go buy one of them over the weekend as a little something to do on Saturday while they're gone. So yeah, I probably will take a break and go see the pretty flowers and take some pictures and buy an azalea over there. So we are going to put it down in the dappled sunlight somewhere near the bridge and the other, the forsythia that's down there, somewhere in that general vicinity. And I did notice that my Clamonis vine over here is blooming. Very pretty. I have to go take a picture of the flowers today. The town employees didn't want the cone either, and they also didn't dispose of it. So that's it. Don says he's done. He's taken it. It's his. We'll continue to look for the base so it would, you know, stay in place properly. We give up. We're out here. It's going on 11. I got the video done. Don finished his Twitter and coffee. I chatted with Michelle for a few minutes about important girl stuff. And, uh... <laughs> I don't have to pick Johnny up till late today, so we had the luxury of uh, getting a slower start than normal today. And it's warm enough we don't either have jackets on. It's a little, little bree more breezy in the uh, open than I'd like, but by the time I get up to the track, I'll be nice and warmed up from walking up there. So I think we're good. Yeah, and it's warm enough for the lizards to be out. <laughs> Don's putting drywall screws in there. They may tear it off the tree, but they're not going to casually open it up and pull out the cup or the nest. Not going to casually open it up. No yeah. If I want Don to check on the box, he's going to have to bring the little screwdriver, which is not a problem. Just looking for that weighted base and not having any luck. Don figured the kids might have wanted to chuck it into the creek to see how big it would splash. But, um, we're just not having any luck finding it. And the thing is, is that thing was pretty heavy. So for someone to be motivated to carry it very far, it just didn't seem that likely. We're getting a little uneven ground walking. And we're trying to think like a kid. <laughs> Since we assume no adult did that, but you know, that might be a stretch. Hey, Mr. Snake. Hi. I'm really not 100% sure what kind he is, except that I don't think he's not a copperhead and not poisonous, but I don't know. He's, I think he's a king snake or a water snake. Doesn't really matter. He's cool. noticing stakes with orange tape. Silt fence is written on it. Maybe they're going to get rid of this ugly landscaping fabric metal hurt yourself on it fence. And they mowed inside all three ball fields yesterday, but not the grass outside the ball fields. And that's because we had rain on the normal mow day. And then a lot of the outer areas are still pretty damp. So they came and squeezed in the fields because the kids are playing on it. And I'm sure they'll just circle around to the outer perimeter next week in the normally scheduled mow day. Let's just hope it doesn't rain again. 
Looks like they've asphalted back over that metal plate that they had put in the road the last couple of days to do some sort of work over there. Well, that's good. It was quite the bump. And some people weren't with the program like that pickup truck driver this morning that you should probably not fly over the bump really fast. We're done for today. I'm sending you off with a good meal. Amen. Yeah, porterhouse steak and two fried eggs and a yum. couple pieces of really yummy cheese. Yeah, amen. Yum, good yum. luck eating all that. Oh, it won't be any pop. <laughs> There's my sleeping beauty. I actually have three sleeping beauties because Stripes on the mushroom. Hey, Tux. And Marty's here in the chair. I really don't want to tell you that I have not seen Morris today and that I have hollered and hollered for him and um, also that I have... Um, Check the security cameras and no luck. I'm in Jules because uh, Ruby is charging. Um, and we just decided I offered to drive Jules downtown. We didn't remember that, we, that it would be convenient to plug Ruby in for the trip this afternoon for Don and Johnny over to Tennessee when I first got home, but we did remember after my walk and you know, she's going to basically add back all of the charging she lost uh, with me driving downtown this morning, probably before they leave. But they kind of sort of got to stop in Greens, uh, Greensboro, or they got to have enough to make it to Hickory. So, I don't know. Dawn's going to want to use the restroom. But, you know, it's maybe the difference between stopping and just plugging in while he uses the bathroom or stopping and plugging in and then having to wait 10 or 15 minutes. He'd like to get to Johnson City, Tennessee, um, you know, uh, before it gets dark, dark, if possible. And I'm not sure that that's possible, but it, it should be close. It's not, you know, if they leave uh, at four o'clock, they could be up there at nine at the hotel. Four and a half hours of driving and half an hour of supercharging, something like that couple of 15 minute stops maybe and there is quite a good possibility that Morris will show up for the afternoon feeding um, the last time I know a hundred percent I remember definitely seeing him was in the chair up the hill yesterday afternoon uh, sometime before we left for Taekwondo that I just remember remember um, doesn't mean he wasn't here after that Obviously up there in the chair, I don't know what's going on with him, but that's one of the spots he regularly sleeps when life is good, so Anyway I will not be telling Johnny I haven't seen him before he leaves. That would just be very upsetting and there's nothing he can do about it It's gonna say that I've got Johnny now and uh, The Rivian has a weighted plate on it. I was trying to see if it was a dealer plate I guess I'll have to keep on looking because I couldn't quite see driving past. 11.4 is ready to install on Jules. I hear it's gone wide release. Uh, several friends have it downloading to their car as well. A white Rivian just pulled in where that Porsche is going. There's not that many parking spaces in there, guys. Yep, I see the Rivian. He's down at the end of the parking spaces. Johnny spotted it first. He's my Rivian spotter. And um, we had not seen that spec in town before. I suspect if we went up and looked at the plate, it's paper. I see Morris in the chair at the top of the hill. I'm not going to call him down, though, until after the guys leave. So, got it plugged in. I canceled out and... Uh, uh, told it to do it again because uh, we've charged Ruby up. First time she was having us stop in Winston-Salem. But now she wants to stop in Col uh, Colfax, North Carolina. That's the Sheets. And then Boone. And then we'll get to our destination somewhere right around 9 p.m. tonight. Okay. Well, that's a little earlier than I thought. So hopefully that works out. I think that's 9 p.m. Central. I was thinking 10. 
Yeah, that's why I said. So that's really ten not, my time, time, but that's nine right. o'clock. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be getting there, and I have guaranteed at the hotel, so there's no problem. Of, yeah, or, and Colfax is fifty percent. Yeah, and so it really, it's not that long. Thirty-five minutes. I guess the 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 big thing to do would be to edit the trip, and then do an ad home home, and see what she does. Uh, and home's at the bottom. Yeah. And this might change the calculation a little bit. I'm on movie. All right, here we go. So again, Colfax, Boone, whoops. Uh, Colfax, Boone. The place. The place, then Clemson. Clemens. Clemens, I'm sorry, thank you, Clemens. Okay. And then home. All I right. have no idea where Clemens is. Yeah, me either. I told so them it's 56 I miles from Boone to Johnson City. And oh. that's not the supercharger to the university, but that's probably close enough. Right, but it's a real twisty road, it looks like, the way it wiggles going there. Right. So, anyway, you'll use that information to make sure when you leave Boone, you've got enough to... Say so you'd roughly have to do 120 miles when you leave Boone to get up there. So probably leave Boone, you, you need uh, 150, 160 miles, something like that. 70%. My navigator takes care of all that okay. stuff. Okay. Well, this is one of those times where getting back to your place is... Uh, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. the bottom yeah. line... Is, uh, well, that... right now the car thinks you can get back to Clemens. Yeah, that's... But the car's going to change its mind about that's that right. tomorrow and tell you, Boone, probably, because yep. you're going to drive around town a little bit. All okay. Right. All right. So unless you're going with us, you best get out. Aww. He's anxious. I, I do believe you're in my seat. There you go. <laughs> Are you excited? I am so excited for you. Good luck tomorrow, buddy. Yeah. All right. So the software update is not available to download yet for Ruby. All I've heard is it's going out to Wise. I love you. Hopefully Ruby will get it and Sunday you and I will go driving around yeah, sure. do an FSD video. Yeah. I, I might have to do one by myself, but I you know, you yeah. and I will be better. Yeah. Everybody wants to know what you think. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Kiss, kiss. Kiss, kiss. All right, you can t bring all the cats in. I don't really feel like going outside and mowing right now, but it's going to rain overnight tonight. And if I don't want the grass to be too wet to mow tomorrow, that means I got to mow it now. And I'd rather not wake up tomorrow feeling like I need to go mow the lawn as soon as I get up. So now, yeah, now. There's just a few drops of rain right now. Nothing serious on the radar. I'm going to mow because I can't stand it anymore and I don't want to do it tomorrow and it's going to rain overnight and I might not be able to do it tomorrow. It might be too wet. So now it is. I made myself an iced coffee and I sat out here with Panther to drink it. Um, give him some attention. Look at the pretty view. Cool down a bit. I'm trying to decide if a, I have enough energy to go for an FSD beta drive um, after mowing. And B, if I want to do it on Friday rush hour traffic. <laughs> I am very glad to have the lawn mowed. I did everything except for down the length of the driveway and up at the street. If uh, the neighbor's lawn guy doesn't show up and go out there soon i'll send don for that part he's he's <laughs> certified to do it the street i'm just kind of fussy near plants and cats up here near the house so i kind of take over that part the guys made it to colfax at sheets and charge next stop boone then next stop um the hotel in tennessee so they're doing pretty good So I didn't have to fall into temptation. The ice cream machine is broke. Boo hoo. So the Easter Bunny's a man, huh? I'd be more excited if there were a kitty nearby and I saw a kitty. 
So 11.3.4 finally went on Jules. I guess the dot four was new today. Dot three had been out to a few other people this week. That's 2022.45.13. I am going to go for a drive and just um, let the dash cam record the interior and exterior. I'll probably make this into uh, a separate video, but we'll see. We'll see how tired I am, how much trouble I have pulling the um, files off the dash cam because Don usually does that, etc. etc. You could smell these all the way apart across the parking lot approaching them, and it wasn't the best, but they sure are pretty. Geraniums, pansies. Oh, the hydrangeas are so pretty. It's a little early for them to be blooming. I guess these were forced for Easter. So they could be given as gifts. Very pretty. I love those winter berries. Some variegated English holly. That is so pretty. I love the shape, Christmas tree oh, shape. Look at the berries on that holly. That's awesome too. Blue princess holly. The selection of azaleas is reasonable, but maybe a little limited. Is this olive osmanthus over here? Clavera, huh? Hmm. Tamukiyama. This is the variety Don has in the front yard in the big planter. This one is Crimson Queen. Not heard of it before. There are so many varieties. Here's a very lacy one with the little berries. Oh, it says that's a Crimson Queen too. Okay, well that was very pretty with the lace. That Scotch Moss, doesn't it look pretty? It says one to three hours of morning sun only have an excellent selection of coleus so I'm probably gonna pick up one of these that is a regal geranium if Michelle were gonna like a flower I think she would like that one that's very pretty I noticed here they have special ready refill pots for sale it just you drop it in you water it the pot holds it but you don't mess with dirt I don't need that much assistance but an interesting concept all right that's what I got um, that's an old shower curtain and there was a little tiny hole when I dropped it so it's good that it's on the shower curtain I don't expect her to let me engage it in the parking lot and I want to go home down Main Street Fuquay so I'm gonna get out on 55 and then I'm going to engage uh, full self-driving beta so good news when I came out of the garage, Morris was down on the boardwalk with Marty and Stripe who had come back up the driveway and he let me pet him and he acted like nothing was wrong and he looked fine. I'd say he had a fright, maybe a fight, and he was just taking it easy and acclimating and after he slipped it off he came down the hill so... Appreciate it if he'd be out there tomorrow morning, though, and wouldn't scare me. Be nice if he goes and he gets in the cat hotel and sleeps on his heating pad tonight. That would be good. So I'm at the Tesla Supercharger in Boone, North Carolina. It's at a CVS pharmacy right across the street from Makudos, who is a longtime Tesla owner. And we've held Blue Ridge Parkway events at uh, his business before. He's a really great host. Anyway, it uh, looks like it's 12 Supercharger stalls. They're all version 3. Um, the CVS is open. There's a Chick-fil-A down the road down there. Uh, it's really nice. Applebee's. You know, you've got some choices here. 
Probably not the best for the middle of the night stopping, but for during business hours, I think this is a really nice stop. Anyway, now you know. So it started raining while we were at the supercharger. This is real rain this time. Uh, not storming, but rain. But I redid the um, route. I canceled out and then navigated to the hotel, which is this 1900 South Rowan Street. And then I put in home and um, it recalculated and said that we can get to Winston-Salem. Um, and so it says there's basically nine minutes left. So it's no different as far as how long we're going to be here. We're going to finish up. It was supposed to be 8.05 and I'm sure that's pretty close to what this is going to be, 8.05 is when we first got here and plugged in, that's when we were gonna leave. So it's about the same. The difference is now we're gonna make it to Winston-Salem, uh, which is a, a good easy on, easy off of sheets. Uh, so that's where we're are targeting for tomorrow. I'm gonna start on the Imperial Probe Droid. It's got uh, 683 pieces. I suspect I'll do half tonight and finish the rest of it in the morning. It's 10 o'clock. I gave up trying to figure out what I wanted to watch on TV. It was partly I couldn't decide and partly a remote problem. So the guys made it to uh, um, Johnson City, Tennessee. No problem. They're in the maroon. They've got Wi-Fi. All's good. Um, they did supercharge in Boone. I didn't realize it was right across the street from the Japanese uh, steakhouse restaurant we'd eaten at before, but it is. And uh, so that's pretty cool. six steps total and I completed half of them. I'm through step three. So I am stopping for the night and uh, yeah, try to do that, uh, finish it up tomorrow.